Every year, I look forward to my ESL music lesson, and that hasn't always been the case. So today, let me share with you my pride and joy, my 10 years tried and true ESL music lesson. Music has not always been my favorite ESL topic. It sounds like it would be so fun, but for years, I really struggled with creating a lesson plan that would be really fun and useful for students. So today, I want to share with you my favorite ESL music lesson plan. Let's just jump in. The first thing I do as a warm up is I have an instruments challenge. So for this, I just put different pictures of instruments on the PowerPoint and I ask the class to tell me the English name for those instruments. This is a really quick, really easy warm up that everyone can participate in because I give really simple ones like piano and guitar, but then I also throw in a few fun, more difficult ones like the cello. It's a really fun, lighthearted way to open up the topic. Then I move into teaching vocabulary. Now, this is the pet peeve I have about a lot of ESL textbooks when it comes to teaching about music. Most of the time, the vocabulary is fully focused on different genres of music. So the entire vocabulary list will just be rock, pop, jazz, country, which is great. Those are good words to learn, but it really limits the topics that you can talk about when it comes to music. It's almost assuming that the only time your students are going to talk about music is when someone says, what kind of music do you like? And they say, I like jazz music. And the conversation just dies there. And it's true, we might say that, but students need to be able to explain much more when it comes to music. We don't just talk about the types of music we like, we talk about the singers and the songs and why we like them. We use adjectives to describe different kinds of music that we like. You know, if someone likes pop music, they say why they like pop music. They say that they like upbeat music, they like the rhythm, they like the melody, they like the lyrics. So I will include a couple of genres that are really popular like pop but I also give some adjectives to the students so they can describe the type of music that they like to listen to. I also include some vocabulary words from the songs that we're going to listen to which is our next section. The next section is us listening to English songs together which is the core part of this lesson. I usually introduce this part of the lesson by saying something like do you want to go to the library and study English for three hours every day, open up your textbook, memorize vocabulary, write them down? And all the students, of course, say no. And I tell them that I know it can be really difficult to continue studying English. Sometimes you get tired, sometimes you get unmotivated, but learning English through songs can be a really great way to have fun while learning English and kind of boost your motivation. So I tell them today, we're not just going to talk about music. Music is supposed to be listened to. So we are going to listen to some English songs and learn English using the songs. Then I choose three different songs that we're going to listen to. Now, the fun thing about this is that you can change these songs to be whatever you like. To be honest, I usually change up these songs every year or every two years. That way I'm keeping fresh music in the lesson and not songs from like 10 or 20 years ago that students aren't really interested in anymore. So I've used songs like Circles by Post Malone or The Man by Taylor Swift or As It Was by Harry Styles. Whatever you think your students will enjoy and whatever has good vocabulary, you can definitely use in class. So the first song we listen to is all about vocabulary. I will choose this song specifically so we can learn vocabulary from it. So most recently, Recently, I did Olivia Rodrigo's Get Him Back. And so students will listen to the song, but before we listen to the song, I give them a list of vocabulary words that I want them to pay attention to. After we listen to the song, I have students do a matching exercise where they just match the vocabulary word to the definition. So while they're listening to the song and Olivia says, I want revenge, students have to figure out what revenge means and match that with the definition. They can use their phones, they can chat with their partners to complete this assignment, but it's a really fun, very natural way to discover new vocabulary words. Basically, I wanna teach students how to do this in their own time. So when students are listening to an English song they enjoy, they can just find and identify words they don't know, use their phones to look up the meaning, and then use it in the future. 
So the first psalm we listen to is all about specific vocabulary. The second psalm we listen to is all about phrases or idioms. So I'll use a song like As It Was by Harry Styles or Lose You To Love Me by Selena Gomez. And in this one, I'll do something similar. I'll pull a few phrases and I'll have students discuss what they think the phrases mean after they've listened to the song. So for example, when Harry says in As It Was, I want you to to hold out the palm of your hand. I give students a few minutes to discuss what they think that means. And after reading the lyrics, they can tell how honestly depressing the song is. And most of them are able to understand that I want you to hold out the palm of your hand means I'm asking for help. I want you to come near to me. I need your help with something. When Selena Gomez sings that she looked at her relationship through rose-colored glasses, well, that's a really common phrase in English, and students are often able to guess that she is being overly optimistic or she's being too romantic when she looks at this relationship and she's not being practical. So I want to show students another way to study English. Not only can you look at specific vocabulary words, but you can find some really common phrases that might be very common in the English language and learn those as well. Finally, for the third song, which is so fun, we look at pronunciation. And for this one, usually I will use a Billie Eilish song and I just switch out which song it is because Billie Eilish does a really great job of kind of talking while she sings so she works really well for this category. Not only can we study vocabulary or phrases but we can also learn pronunciation from native speakers by listening to English songs. So before we listen to the song I have a list of words on the screen. Words like because or want to or kind of. And I tell students to listen carefully to how Billy pronounces them when she sings because she doesn't say because, she says cuz. She doesn't say want to, she says wanna. She doesn't say kind of, she says kinda. And so after we listen to this song together, I run through the list with the students and I have them practice the pronunciation. And this is always such a fun part. Students love this. They love saying kinda, sorta, wanna, gonna. And it's also helpful for their English as well because you know maybe they have a standardized test and maybe the native speakers who did the recording would say something like wanna or gonna instead of want to or going to. So not only is it fun, it could be helpful for exams, but also if my students are ever talking with a native speaker, the native speaker might not be pronouncing everything perfectly like what they have always heard in textbooks. When they're talking with foreign guests or foreign customers, they might actually say things like wanna and gonna and cuz. So it's a good thing for them to be aware of. So quick recap. <laughs> we had our instruments challenge as a warm up. We learned some vocabulary. Then we listened to a psalm where we focused on vocabulary, a psalm where we focused on phrases, and then a psalm where we focused on pronunciation. Now that's a lot of listening. So at this point, I'll usually give them a couple of chances to practice speaking. I'll have students talk with their partner about their favorite song or their favorite singer, or I will have them talk about which of the songs we listened to today they enjoyed the most. And something I usually do at the beginning of the lesson as well, when we're talking about the instruments challenge, is I remind students that learning English should be personalized. I ask them a question like, are you going to use the word saxophone every day in your daily English lesson? Life. And most of the time they say, no, probably not. And it's true, they're probably not going to say saxophone every single day when they study English. So one thing that's really helpful when learning English is identifying the vocabulary that's going to be most useful to, to you. Now, if you played the saxophone or if you loved jazz music, then yeah, actually learning the word saxophone might actually be useful for you. So I tell students that it's important to tailor the vocabulary that, you le that you're learning. Maybe instead focus on the words that are going to have the most value for you. And during the speaking practice, this is a great chance for them to do that. If their favorite singer is Taylor Swift, then they can learn the vocabulary that they need to discuss 
plus Taylor Swift. The student whose favorite singer is Taylor Swift is probably going to use different vocabulary compared to the student whose favorite singer is Eminem. They're two very different artists, two very different style of music, so maybe the vocabulary that you need to communicate your ideas would be different as well. After giving students a chance to practice speaking, then I usually move into another listening exercise, which if you're not teaching a listening class, then maybe this is not going to be as useful for you. Maybe this is something you could skip or you could adjust, but I often teach listening classes. And so I like to give students a chance to practice listening to native speakers in a natural environment. Often in classes, we just listen to the audio that comes from a textbook, which is great, but it's not that natural because when actors are recording for a textbook, they have a set script. And during that script, they only talk about one topic. They never talk over each other. They always follow a very standardized format. If they're talking about food, they're only going to talk about food. So I like to give students a chance to listen to two native speakers having a natural conversation. That's where carpool karaoke comes in. So we will watch a short carpool karaoke lesson. And actually when I say short, I don't really mean short. It's kind of long. If you're not familiar with it, a late night talk show host invites a musician into his car and they just drive around singing songs. It's really perfect because because most of the videos are around 10 to 15 minutes, which is quite long. That takes up a lot of class time, but it's really difficult for students to listen to English for that long of a time period. Having some singing though helps break things up. So usually they'll sing a little bit, talk a little bit, sing a little bit, talk a little bit, which just makes it a lot more manageable to listen to. There are so many different carpool karaoke episodes, but I find that students like the Ed Sheeran one the most because it has some physical comedy in it. At one point, they try to see how many chocolate candies they can fit into their mouth. And even if you can't understand a word of English, you can still see what's going on and students find it really enjoyable. And Ed Sheeran doesn't only sing his songs that he has released. He has his own songs, but then he also has songs that he wrote for Justin Bieber or songs from One Direction as well. There's also a bit of variety in the songs that he has. He has really popular songs like Shape of You that everyone knows, but then he has some of his other rap style songs. So I just feel like most of the students can really enjoy it. And while students are watching Carpool Karaoke, I usually have them answer a few questions. For example, you know, when did he start playing guitar? Or what city did he go to with Justin Bieber? And what sport did they play there? So students are still able to listen and try to see if they can understand the conversations and find the answers. But like I said, if you're not doing a listening class, then you don't have to do this part. You could just add another speaking practice or or add in another activity. The other thing I didn't mention is you can also add in activities from the book. Now, whatever textbook you're using is going to be different, but that's what makes this lesson so customizable. So at any point you can add in some exercises from your textbook because your textbook will probably have those available. At the end of the class, the homework that I give students is that they have to listen to an English song, any English song, write down the name of the artist, write down the name of the song, and then write down five vocabulary words that they learned from the song. The homework is super fast, super easy to check, but it gives students a chance to take control over their learning and actually try these techniques for themselves. After 10 years of teaching music lessons and not having them go well, this is my tried and true method for doing an ESL music lesson. Start with a fun warm up like an instruments challenge. Teach vocabulary that will help students talk about what they like about music, who they like. Listen to three songs, one about vocabulary, one about phrases, and one about pronunciation. Give them a speaking practice where they can share their opinions about music. Maybe have a carpool karaoke listening session or just add in some exercises from the book and then give them the homework to practice on their own. I truly love this lesson so much. I love that it's very customized well, you can switch out whatever songs you want and it's just so much fun for me and for the students as well. So if you've ever taught a music lesson and you had some songs that students really enjoyed, leave them down in the comments below. 
I'll include a list of some of the songs that I've used in the past and I'll also link to the article that I wrote about this so you can look at everything in the written form. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. You can message me on Instagram at Atlas Teaching. You can always check out the website for more tips and ideas. You can also check back here for weekly videos. Okay, that's all for today. Bye.